Assalamu alaikum. As usual, uh, we, this episode relates to the friends of Bangladeshis. It could be in Bangladesh or in United Kingdom. So each time we bring a very special person, and today is no exception. I'm going to introduce him very soon, but um, before that, let's go and see a video clip on him. Stephen Timms is a British Labour Party politician who has been the Member of Parliament for East Ham since 1997. Timms had retained the earlier Newham North East seat for his party at the 1994 by-election. Timms served in the government for several periods and for several portfolios including as the Chief Secretary to the Treasury from 2006 to 2007. Before entering to the House of Commons, Stephen Timms was a leader for the Newham Council. Newham is located in the heart of East London with a presence of diverse communities. British Bangladeshis are the largest community in Newham where Stephen Timms has actively engaged himself with the issues which affected the British Bangladeshi community the most. He has actively participated in various campaigns and initiatives to benefit the lives of various communities which also involved visiting Bangladesh. His personal commitments to intern Bangladeshi community has made him a true friend of Bangladeshis. Welcome back. We have just seen a video clip on that very special person. He has been a friend and a very well-known person within the British Bangladeshi community as well as in, uh, within the community, British community. He has served in many ministries and he has been elected, being elected every time in different elections and with amazing results. Welcome. Thank you very much. When did you first get elected as a parliamentarian? Uh, I was first elected to parliament in 1994. Ninety I'd been a councillor before that for, for 10 years. Okay. How many times? I think it's seven times. Seven now times to amazing. Parliament. Uh, amazing. Most recently, of course, earlier this year, and I've been very appreciative of all the support that I've received from the community throughout that whole period. Thank you, thank you. And um, also, this snap election—it was a vast majority uh, you g gained. It was a very good majority from my point of view, um, almost 40,000, not quite 40,000, but very close to, um, certainly the biggest for me ever. And uh, again, you know, I feel very grateful for all the support in the community in, in Newham, my constituency, East Ham, but Newham as a whole, very strong support for the Labour Party Your that we've benefited from a long time. Only about 7,000. The, your closest yes, that, candidate. That's true. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Yep. And you held uh, various uh, various posts in um, different ministries. Yes. Tell us about it. Right. Well, I, I became a minister in 1998, Thank a you. year after the Labour government was elected uh -huh. under Tony Blair in, in 1997. And I was then a minister throughout the period until the end of the Labour government in mm. 2010. So 12 years altogether. Um, and we re moved around quite a lot in our government. I spent quite a lot of time in the Treasury, probably yes. of the 12 years, probably about five years altogether mm. in the Treasury, including a stint in the cabinet as chief secretary to the, the treasury. treasury. That was uh, in 2006 to 2007. Um, other posts in the treasury, the department for work and pensions, the department of trade and industry. I was minister for schools for a year. Um, and uh, I, I, I enjoyed all the job. I was minister for, for energy for a year. They were all fascinating jobs. Looking back on it, maybe it would have been better if we'd stayed in one place a bit longer instead of rushing but off to do the next thing. It? But it is, of course, it's from the point of view of yeah. the person involved, it's all fascinating to get uh, up to speed with all these different areas. Um, I mean, in your constituency, uh, you have a very safe seat. What would be the number of Bangladeshis, British Bangladeshis? Well, first of all, I don't like, the term, the, I don't like the term safe seat because that sounds as though I'm a bit sort of complacent <laughs> or taking things for yeah, granted. But with it's a big majority. It's a big majority. It's, a, it's a big majority, but yeah. that's because there's a lot of hard work mm. um, carried out in the Labour Party in, in Newham and we need to carry on doing all that mm. hard work. Um, but uh, 
the proportion of Bangladeshis, I think in the last census, if I remember rightly, it's around 10 to 12 percent of my constituents or, or residents of the borough of Newham are from Bangladesh. And of course, that is a proportion that's grown quite sharply over the last years, particularly as people have moved out from Tower Hamlets. Mm -hmm. Compared to Tower Hamlets, there are uh, proportionately less councillors within the council, isn't it? That's probably true. I mean, the, obviously, the Bangladesh proportion of the community in Newham is much lower, lower. than the Bangladeshi proportion in Tower Hamlets. Uh, so, as I say, 10 to 12 percent in Newham, much higher in Tower Hamlets. Now, if you look at how many Bangladeshi councillors we have, certainly the number is less, although it's probably not much less than 10 percent, I wouldn't have thought. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm just quickly thinking who the Bangladeshi councillors will be. You're probably up to sort of four or five or six, mm -hmm. I guess. When did you first visit Bangladesh? My first visit was 1996. So I've been visiting for over 20 years now. I went to Silet on that occasion. It was a very memorable visit and a visit that I enjoyed immensely. Okay. How long for? It was only for a few days. Okay. Um, I was in touch with the Newham Bengali Community Trust, right. uh, which was working in Newham at the time, and so I was able to visit their premises in Silet okay. and also look at you know other because they were funded by the British High Commission in Dhaka. They were. That's right. Those days. They were, uh, and they had funding in the UK as mm -hmm. as well. So they were quite an active organisation, and it was uh, good to be able to visit them and you yeah. know. To walk through Silet and see a sign up that said Newham, Newham, Newham yes, Bengali yes. Community Trust. So that yeah. was an interesting experience. And as a minister, have you visited Bangladesh? Yes, um, I visited when I was in the cabinet, when I was a cabinet mm -hmm. minister um, in 2006-7, um, and that was the time when Anwar Chowdhury was the British High Commissioner in Bangladesh. Mm. So I stayed with him in the okay. uh, High Commissioner's residence in Dhaka. In Dhaka. Uh, we had a very, very good visit. He showed me lots of interesting uh, places, areas where uh, support from the Department of International Development was, was, was helping. Um, and I was able, while I was there, to announce uh, an increase in UK government support for Bangladeshi education. When did you last visit Bangladesh? Uh, my last visit was last year. I was there with uh, Labour friends of, of, uh, Bangladesh. of Bangladesh and again we had a, a really excellent visit. First visit and last visit. Tell us the changes you have witnessed. Right, well I, I mean, I've, I've touched on the one which impresses me the most and that is the dramatic increase in the number of children able to complete primary school. I vividly remember that first visit going to a charitable clinic and a young lad came in, aged eight, probably eight or nine. He was in rags uh, and he wasn't very well. That's why he came to the clinic. And somebody said to me, well, he's not in school because he's working at the local hotel. And at that time, the figures I've since checked show that fewer than half of primary school age children were able to complete mm. primary school. Now that proportion is up way it's, over 90%. Yeah. It's really been a dramatic change. Dramatic and, change. And I think it reflects enormous credit on the people of Bangladesh, that determination that young children should be given a chance. Uh, the British government has been able to help, that's great, but it's been, it is a success for the people of Bangladesh. Organisations like BRAC, mm -hmm. I've been to quite a few BRAC schools in villages in different parts of and Bangladesh. And uh, changes did you notice in communication, technology and, uh, you know, digital Bangladesh? Well, clearly those changes have been enormous uh, and they've been enormous worldwide. They've been just as enormous in the UK as they have mm -hmm. been in Bangladesh. And Bangladesh is... Uh, has taken full advantage of some of the opportunities that digital technology And provides. it is one of the 11 emerging countries. It is, it is. It's mm. done very, very well. And um, I uh, enjoyed on one occasion launching the shares of uh, Beximco, Beximco pharma yes. Pharmaceuticals on the, the London Stock Exchange. You know, that's a, a company that's done well, well in well, the UK, yes. done well raising finance uh, using the resources of Bangladesh uh, and pharmaceuticals as well and, and pharmaceuticals is a good sector mm -hmm. yeah.
infrastructure wise what have you noticed in Bangladesh? Well, I think there's still a good way to go on mm. infrastructure. I mean, I, obviously, I've travelled uh, when I've travelled largely by road, mm. uh, and sometimes I've found that a bit hair raising. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't been driving; someone else has been driving. who's a bit more ex familiar with the conditions than than me. But the, the road's sometimes quite narrow, and you've got big lorries, and you know that can, that can be. Uh, so I, there's, there's undoubtedly more to be done. But there has been dramatic progress, and you you can't uh, escape that conclusion from visiting Bangladesh over a period that the, the progress really has been dramatic. And I, you know, I think people can take great pride in what the country has achieved mm. over those 20 years that I'm aware of. Self-sufficient in food, uh, education, in every angle. And of course the country see. has only been independent since <coughs> 1972. So, yeah. you know, it's, 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 a, it's an impressive record uh, and I know the community does take great pride in it yeah. and I think uh, the community has every right to do so. Thank you. Uh, viewers, we are going for a short break. Stay with us. We'll be back soon. Welcome back. Uh, we are on a special episode of Friends of Bangladeshi with a very special person today. He's none other than Right Honourable Stephen Timms MP. I want to talk a little bit about the trade relations with Bangladesh, UK Bangladesh. Well, mm. it's a, a close partnership between Britain and Bangladesh. Uh, it's a trade partnership, but it's a, a political friendship mm -hmm. as well, going back a, a long time. And there are so many Bangladeshis in the UK that means obviously we've got very strong ties. But we, uh, uh, you know, we, we obviously import a lot of, of, of textile garment, uh, garments mm. into the UK from Bangladesh. Bangladesh is able to provide excellent quality, very mm. good price. Uh, goods which are very popular in the UK and in many ways that's the the backbone of the the trading relations but I think you know in the future we're going to see IT services mm. we're going to see call really centers yeah. um, in in Bangladesh Bangladesh is increasingly I think going to be providing high value-added products mm -hmm. and, and services let's talk uh, briefly about the climate change we know that it is a serious and severe issue and um, what has happened in North America and the Trump administration they are not in favor of mm. you know the world joining together to address that issue um, and Bangladesh is one of the worst affected countries in the world so what is your opinion about that? Well, I, I think Donald Trump is making a very serious mistake. I mm. think the, uh, the Paris Agreement on tackling climate change is a huge step forward, a very welcome achievement on the part of all the countries of the world. And all of us need to implement it uh, and make the changes that are required in order to limit the future damage from climate change. And of course, flooding has benefits when it's manageable in terms of uh, uh, two, two crops a year and, and, yeah. and, and uh, b delivering the fertility. Let's come back to the British Bangladeshi community. What have you witnessed, you know, since you first met a Bangladeshi and to date, mm. what changes have Well, the community has done very, very well. And, and perhaps the most striking thing, which I see most clearly in my community, is the very impressive education achievements mm -hmm. now being realised by young people in the community. We've GCSE got a, and A-level this year. GCSE and yeah. A-level. Uh, we've got a new institution in Newham, Newham Collegiate 6th, mm -hmm. which had absolutely stunning A-level results. And, and young people 
people going on to the top universities, actually not just in the UK, but some of them off to the US as well. Um, and a, a good proportion of those were Bangladeshi young people taking enormous pride in what they were achieving. They're very, it's a very motivated community. Young people motivated to study, wanting to do well, wanting do you, do to make you their think, parents proud of them and, and yeah. achieving that. Do you think the community is diversifying? Because it's concentrated on uh, the initially ca uh, textile industry, right, then catering. Yes, uh, increasingly being represented in every part including of our politics. national life. Certainly including in mm. politics and uh, uh, we've uh, you know, a, a good representation now, not least of Bangladeshi women in the House of Commons. Um, and I'm sure that will continue Three. and Continue. that we will, as a country, be greatly strengthened and enriched by the contribution that this new generation of Bangladeshis are, are, mm -hmm. are going to be making to our society as a whole. As you know, over 90% of the restaurant takeaways are owned and manned by British Bangladeshis. And at a rate of two, a premises is closing, a mm. business is closing down mm. because of severe staff shortages. Mm. We do understand that the older generation are retiring and the younger generation is not taking over. But however, the immigration issue has made it worse mm. and it is really heavy-handed tactics by the government. Mm. And what is the future of the industry? We don't know. What is the future of the community? We don't know. We are really lost. What is your mm. opinion about that? Well, uh, we've got a migration advisory committee set up by the government, which is in place to advise on these matters. Um, one thing I was very disappointed by was the impression was given in the Brexit referendum campaign that if we voted to leave the European Union, mm. then ministers would be able to be more generous towards migration from Bangladesh and elsewhere in the world. I believe that was a very, very misleading impression that those ministers gave. I don't think they've got any intention of making migration from Bangladesh or elsewhere what, more, more How easy. do you think we can make sure that the industry survives? Well, I, I, I think we do need some change, some relaxation of the migration restraints, but we also need to make sure that young people in the UK get the skills and the training that they need to do well in this industry. But what has happened is the government, subsequent government, said that, you know, why don't you employ local people? Now, you cannot just employ local people. You have to train them. Mm. Mm. You have to encourage them to join the industry. And there has to be incentive given by the government. Mm. For instance, mm. let's say if, if uh, they had to go to look for a job and to train them, but they're unemployed. So a incentive has to come. Training has to be given. And it's no point like uh, Eric Pickles said that we have got these colleges, nobody came. You can't just open mm -hmm. an institution and say that nobody is coming. Mm -hmm. It is the duty of the government, isn't it, to encourage them? I think it is. Uh, uh, and of course, the government is making available a large amount of money for apprenticeship programs. Going back to immigration, you know, the undocumented um, people we have, initially, they were brought to this country by SBS system for a year. They came from a very poor background. So everybody knew that they would not return, not, not all of them. Mm. And they are working here th and there, and there are punishment to the employers for that. Do you not think that with the staff shortages, they are given the legality so that the government gets benefited by uh, getting the tax mm. from them mm. and also the catering industry gets some skilled sc stuff, I would say, because mm. they have become skilled now. Well, this is a new one on me. Um, I, I've got a good deal of sympathy for what you're saying. Of course, what the government will not want to do, not be prepared to do, is give the impression that if you come illegally, 
in due no, course. No, but they, have, everything will they be fine. came legally right. with SBS system. Now, going back to Commonwealth. Mm. Commonwealth was the ex-British colonies. Mm -hmm. And then it died, more or less. It stayed by name. Um, Honorable Queen, as head of the Commonwealth, everything remained the same. But new Commonwealth emerged. Australia, New Zealand, Canada. So do you think that with Brexit, there would be a revival of the Commonwealth? There is a huge amount of uncertainty at the moment about what's going to happen with Brexit. I did not support Brexit. I'm on the Brexit Select Committee in the House of Commons, so I'm mm. watching what's going on. And we just don't know at the moment what our relationship with the rest of Europe is going to be after these negotiations. But whatever it is, I think it is certain that we are going to need to strengthen the friendships we've got in other parts because, of the world. You know, and in they particular are emerging with the Commonwealth economies. countries. Emerging they are they're growing very rapidly. Export wise. You know, the country will benefit. Bang Bangladesh vice versa. is a, a very spectacular example mm. of rapid economic growth um, and enormous potential. So, yes, we, we definitely need to renew, to strengthen those ties, perhaps to formalise them in new, new ways with new trading agreements. Mm. That's what uh, the Department for International Trade will be, will be seeking. Uh, there'll be opportunities there for, for Bangladesh. There'll certainly be opportunities for the UK, and we have That's to make right. the most of them. Your message to the community, and when I say to the community, it is to the young people, to women, and the community in general. What mm -hmm. is your message? Well, I hope that young people, women, the community in general will feel very positive about their future in the UK. We are facing a time of uncertainty because of Brexit, and we just don't know what's going to emerge from all of that. But it's a time when we need everybody who's in the UK to be able to make their fullest contribution. The authorities are going to have to support that. Uh, as local MPs, people like me, are determined to do so as well. And, and I feel very optimistic about the contribution we can expect from the Bangladeshi community in the UK in the future. And I think the flip side of that is the community itself can be very and optimistic about its future in this country. Very briefly, you mentioned something earlier on when we were talking about the faith. Yes. Could you just briefly well, say? Well, I'm the Labour Party's faith envoy. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, a point which I very frequently make is that, in my view, religious faith is a very good starting point for politics. Now, sometimes people say you shouldn't mix up faith and politics, and if you do, you're asking for trouble, and they point to trouble somewhere in the world, and they say, there you are, that's what happens. But I think that's a misunderstanding. I think the truth is that religious faith, Christianity, Islam, others as well, enhances it, it is the, the, the best starting point, actually, because it's the source of just the values that we need to make politics work, responsibility, mm. solidarity, patience, compassion, truthfulness. Those are the values that our politics needs. They've been wearing a bit thin over the last few years. We need them to be renewed and rebuilt. And I believe that people with strong faith convictions are in exactly the right position to Thank do you. that. We are running out of time. Thank you. Uh, viewers, we had a very special guest today and we have learned a lot and he has been always with the Bangladeshi community. You see him in every function, almost he attends. He tries his best to help us. Thank you so much Thank you. for coming today. Thank you for having me. Viewers, we'll be back with another episode of uh, Friends of Bangladeshi with another very special person soon. Thank you.